In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between var versus let in Swift. Let's start by defining their terms. A var means variable, which means we can change the value of it after it's been created. Let is a constant, which means its value can't be changed after it's been created. Let's take a look at some examples. Let's define a variable, email, of type string, and let's set it equal to a string, john, at example, dot com. And then we'll print email. Now, due to type inference in Swift, we actually don't need to include this string type in the declaration. Swift is smart enough to know that because we're initializing it to the string john at example.com, that the variable email is of type string. Now, let's say we wanted to change email to a different string. Say we wanted to assign it to j at example.com. Now if we print email, we can see that email is now equal to j at example.com. So this is how a variable in var works in Swift, is that we can assign a new value to it after it's been created. There is one important thing that you need to be aware of. Once we've declared a type of a variable, it can't be changed later on in the program. So in this case, if we define variable as of type string, we can't change it to, say, an integer later on in the program. There's one more important thing to know about variables in Swift, and that is we can't change the type of a variable once it's been created. So, for example, our email variable at the top, we know is of type string. So we can't change it to something like an integer later on in the program because we've already created it as a string initially. So if we wanted to change email to an integer, you can see we get an error. We can't do that. We have to keep it of type string. The exception being is if we declare that email is of type any. Any is a special type in Swift, which means any type. In this case, we could then, if we've declared it as an any type, we can then assign email to a string and then maybe later on decide we want to change email to an integer and that would be okay. But we really shouldn't do this. It's better to declare and be explicit about what type and try to be as specific as possible about the kind of type your variable is and then stick to that throughout your entire program. So now let's use let instead of var. If we change var in our to let for our email and now we've declared a constant called email, which is of type string, you can see that we've now got an error in our program. The compiler is saying we can't assign a new value to our constant email, and that's because we've already created a value for this constant earlier in the program, and we can't change the value of a constant once it's been created. We've already set it equal to john at example.com here, so we can't do this. So var versus let is pretty straightforward when it comes to value types like strings and integers in Swift. But it gets a little more complicated when we're dealing with reference types in Swift. First, let's, de let's define the difference between value types and reference types in Swift. Well, in Swift, there are two different kinds of types. There are value types and there are reference types. Value types what happens is value types, when they are assigned 
to a variable or constant or passed into a function, their values are copied into those variables, uh, constants, or functions. Whereas reference types, they pass in a reference to the variable, constant, or function. The difference between using var and let in Swift when using reference types becomes important when we use things like properties. Let's define a class called user that has a couple of variable properties. First is going to be a variable property called name, which is type string. The second is going to be a variable property email, which is also type string. Then we're going to declare an init function so we can create it, which is going to take an argument name, which is type string, and email, which is also type string. And all the init function is going to do is set our name and email properties. And it's going to set them equal to the arguments that are passed in to the init function. So self.email equals email and self.name equals name. Now let's define a second class called salesperson. And let's say that salesperson inherits from our user class. But salesperson is also going to have two additional properties on it. It's going to have a variable property, let's call it quota, and it's type int. And then it's going to have a constant property called region of type string. And then it's going to have an initial value with the assignment operator equal to Midwest. And then let's define its init function. This time it's also going to take an argument name, email. This time we'll add quota as an argument as well of type int. And inside the body of the init function, we're going to set the quota property equal to the quota argument. Then we're going to call the super.init function with the name and email arguments. So now we have our two classes, salesperson and user. Let's see how var and let is affects Let's see how these classes and properties are affected by var versus let. First, let's define a variable called sale, salesperson. And that's going to be equal to a new salesperson with a name, let's pass in John, an email, let's say John at example.com and a quota of five. So now we have a new salesperson and we assign that equal to a variable called salesperson. We can then print salesperson and you can see it's a salesperson class. Let's try changing the salesperson's quota. you can see that we've now updated the quota to 10. And we can do that because we've declared the quota property as a variable and our salesperson is also a variable as well. We can even go further and change, instead of quota, we can also change inherited properties like email. So let's say email, we want to assign a new email to j at example.com and we can see this also works for inherited properties as well. So variable or var works as expected with class types. But let's change var now to let. What happens? Well as you can see even though we've defined salesperson as a constant we can still modify the email property of that constant. You can see it's updated the email property 
of the instance we created. With class types that are assigned to constants in Swift, as long as the property is defined as a variable, we can still change it even though the class may be defined as a constant. So we could also change quota equal to 10, and that got updated as well. Now, what isn't affected are constant properties like region. If we try to change the region to west coast, we'll get an error because region is defined as a constant property on the salesperson class. This doesn't matter whether salesperson itself is a constant or a variable. If we change this let keyword to var, you can see we still get an error. It still says let is still a constant property and can't be modified. So it doesn't matter whether our uh, salesperson is a constant or a variable, it still won't let us modify constant properties. So we can see how var and let affects reference types like classes and their properties. But how does it affect value types like struct? Well let's, well, let's take a look. If we define a new struct, this time we're going to call it obstacle. An obstacle is going to be pretty simple. It's going to have a property called height, which is a double, and it's going to have a property width, which is also a double. And let's create a variable called hurdle, which is equal to a new obstacle. And we're going to give it a height of 5 and a width of 10. Let's go ahead and print hurdle. So you can see it is an obstacle. So now you can see we've defined a variable hurdle which is a struct type, a value type. Let's change the height of our hurdle. So let's go ahead and change height to 10. And you can see the playground shows us that we've now changed the height of hurdle to 10. So we can change variable properties of structs that are declared as variables. But what happens if we try to if we define hurdle as a constant? Let's change var to let. And you can see there's now an error. It says that we can't assign a new value to the property height. Well, wait a minute. Even though we've declared height as a variable property, Swift is saying we can't define a new value to it. And that's because of the way that Swift handles value types with regards to var and let. Properties of value types like struct that are assigned to constants can't be modified after they're created. So in this case, after we create our obstacle and assign it to the constant hurdle, we can't modify the variable property height irregardless of whether it's a variable or a constant. This works the same way with other variable with other value types like arrays. Let's say we define a constant of followers and followers is equal to an array of strings. Let's John, Jane, and Adam. So now we have an array and we assign it to the constant of followers. If we try to append a new item to this array, you'll see we get an error. We can't modify the array because it's been assigned to a constant and constants uh, and arrays are value types. Arrays work this way because arrays behind the scenes are actually implemented as structs, so they're value types as well. So we can't modify 
an array after, after it's been assigned to a constant. So thank you for checking out my video. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to check my website for additional videos and content that I'll be releasing there. If you'd like to find out more information, head over to my website at amdelong.com and sign up for the Swift newsletter. Uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later.